Right, so today I want to talk about the different microphones we can use with our loop station. Now the Boss RC300 and the Boss RC505 both support two different styles of microphones. And in this video, I'm going to break down the pros and the cons of each style. Hey what's up, hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome back to another video. If you're new around here, I'm Ben Rollins and this channel is all about live looping. I upload three videos just like this every single week, so if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Now today we are going to be taking a look at two different types of microphones that we can use with our loop station and which is the best one for live looping. So let's first kick things off with this style of microphone here. This is called a condenser microphone. Now a condenser microphone is designed for environments like this inside of a studio. Now normally I would use a condenser microphone to record my vocals for singing on a studio track that you would release onto Spotify or Apple Music for example. Now the difference between a condenser microphone and a dynamic microphone like I have here is how sensitive the microphone is and also the noise rejection. So because this condenser microphone is designed for silent environments like in here, the problem is it has very poor sound rejection. So it means when I'm talking into it, it will pick up the audio for basically a full 360. Even if you're talking into the back of the microphone, it's still gonna pick you up relatively well. Now I'm going to set up the condenser microphone with the Boss RC300 and I will demonstrate how this microphone sounds. So we're just going to grab our XLR cable just like you normally would and what we're going to do is we are going to plug our microphone in just like normal. So on the Boss RC300, the special thing about the condenser microphone is the fact it requires phantom power. Now luckily on the Boss loop stations, RC505, RC300, they do support plus 48 volts, which is phantom power. So that means we can supply some extra voltage to push this microphone to its full capability for it to work correctly with our loop pedal. So the way that we set up phantom power on the Boss RC505 and the Boss RC300 differs slightly. So I'll first show you how to set it up on the Boss RC300 and then we'll hop over to the Boss RC505 and I'll show you how to set it up on that looper pedal. So before we start plugging things in and turning phantom power on, what we first want to do is we want to make sure our master level is down and our input for our microphone is also turned right down. This will stop any popping, clipping any feedback through your speakers so you don't damage your speakers and more importantly you don't damage your ears. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the back of our Boss RC300 and on the back we have all of our various connections. Now over here we have our microphone input but right next to the mic input we have this phantom switch. So this will turn phantom power on and off so we obviously have the option for off and we also have the option for on. Now we're going to make sure that it's switched off and then we are going to take our condenser microphone and we are going to plug our XLR cable into our looper pedal. Now the reason why you want to make sure that it's off when you're actually plugging the microphone in is because if we switch it to on and then we plug our microphone in, you'll notice that the peak light just kicked in there. You don't really want to unnecessarily cause any clipping, especially if you accidentally turn any of these up and you leave your master level on, it's going to cause a click through your speakers. So you don't really want to do that. So what I like to do is I like to switch it off, plug my microphone in, doesn't cause any peaking on the light and then turn phantom power on. So that just is a little bit of a safer workflow. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn down the input right down. So again, we don't have any popping or feedback when we turn this on and we're going to head into our system settings. Scroll on over until we get to the second option. So if I head in again, second option, you can see we have phantom power and currently it's turned off. So I'm going to turn this on, exit out. And now when I talk into the microphone, you can see that it is getting picked up. So now that we have successfully plugged in our condenser microphone, I'm now going to demonstrate the way this microphone receives my voice. And I'll also show you how the sound rejection isn't exactly ideal for live looping. Right, so what we want to do is when we're setting our levels, we want to make sure that we don't push the microphone too much and we want to avoid peaking. So I'm going to set a half decent level on my master out just so it's sending a healthy signal 
to my speakers. And now we are going to set our input level. So when I'm setting up the input level, you can now hear I'm talking through this microphone. So I'm using the microphone in my hand, the condenser, I'm no longer using the microphone on the camera. And as you can see, it's picking up my voice pretty, pretty well. Now, if we push this a little bit too far, you'll see that it will start to peak and we'll lose a lot of audio integrity. So we'll turn that back a little bit uh, so it's nice and healthy. So now that we have set the levels on our condenser microphone, I'm now going to demonstrate how this microphone sort of rejects and picks up sound. So on a condenser microphone, we I usually have a front of the microphone and the back of the microphone. So the front's usually labeled by a little dot like this or the logo or the, of the brand that the microphone is. So this basically tells you talk into the microphone this way. So you can see that this is picking up my voice really, really well. It sounds really, really good, great quality. But the problem is, as I turn the microphone around, I'm talking into the side of it. You can still hear it's picking up my voice pretty well. And even when I talk into the back of the microphone, it's still picking up my voice really, really well, which means the condenser microphone is not suitable for a live stage situation because it's basically gonna pick up everything the crowd's doing, all the glasses clattering in the, in the pub, the club, whatever, people shouting and screaming and talking, and all of that is going to record into your loops along with all of the stage noise, like your guitar, your piano, whatever, and then it's going to build up and build up and create a huge wall of sound and inevitably cause a lot of feedback. So it's, it's not a very desirable sound that we want to use. However, right now, obviously, we are using this condenser microphone in a studio environment. So this is where you would primarily want to use this. You may be doing some more like studio looping, like some live album, or maybe you're doing some videos for YouTube, something like that. So this might be a better choice because it sounds so much nicer. However, you may still run into a problem. And this problem comes with the noise of your actual loop pedal. So if I just record a loop into my loop pedal, chord 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 a loop into my loop pedal, chord. If you listen carefully in the background of that loop, you can hear me actually clicking the physical loop pedal to record and play back the tracks, which isn't exactly ideal because obviously this is going to build up as you loop and loop and loop. And if it's going through headphones, listening back to it in a studio through monitors, you're going to hear all of the pedal clicks on your loop station. So it's going to totally destroy your performance, which is where the next style of microphone really comes into play. So this right here is a dynamic microphone. And this is my preferred style of microphone for live looping. And it's the one I use on all of my performances. So in particular, this is the Sennheiser E945. It's a super cardio dynamic microphone. So it's really high quality, you know, you have, it's, it's a really nice, crisp, clear sound of you singing and talking into it, but it has all of the advantages of the sound rejection inside of the actual microphone. Now, the way we set up a dynamic microphone is super simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip our loop pedal up again, and we're going to take a look at the connections on the back. Now, this time we are going to turn fans and power off when using a dynamic microphone because a dynamic microphone majority of the time does not require any form of phantom power so it's unnecessary to push the microphone more than is needed you know it doesn't need any phantom power usually this style of mic so we can just plug it straight in and it's plug and play up and running in moments so now that we've turned phantom power off on our boss rc300 our xlr cable's already plugged in so we're going to put our loop pedal back down and we are going to turn our master level down along with our input level, just like last time to avoid any unnecessary feedback, clipping, and clicks and pops in our speakers. So now we're going to plug our XLR cable into our microphone, and we are pretty much now ready to start looping and setting our levels. Now the major benefits of the dynamic microphone are the sound rejection. So this means I can use this on stage and it's only going to pick up what's going directly into the microphone, whatever's going in the front ways into the mic and it's hardly going to pick up anything that's coming in sideways and anything that's coming through the back of the microphone. Now the next benefit of the dynamic mic as well is because it's got such great sound rejection, it also takes vibrations a lot better. So unlike with the condenser mic, if I was hand holding it like this right now and I was flinging it around on stage and getting all hyped and excited, 
The microphone's going to hear all of that rumbling because the mic is that sensitive, it will pick up all of the vibrations coming through the microphone body and encasement. So now, with the dynamic microphone, we don't have this issue, so I can get really animated on stage and it's not going to be rumbling and you can hear all of the, the vibrations of my hand moving it. So, let's set up the mic levels. So same again, like last time, let's set a healthy master level. We'll clear out the loop from our last demonstration and now we will set our mic level. So I'm going to talk directly into the microphone and you can see already we are sounding pretty, pretty good. I haven't pushed the microphone quite as much because I can get slightly closer to this one without it peaking. I can talk a little bit louder into it because it's not as sensitive. The condenser microphone's super, super sensitive. So it like picks up literally everything, whereas this, you know, it's not as sensitive, so we can push it a little bit more with a little bit more headroom. So, the beautiful thing now is when I record a loop into my loop pedal, chord 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 a loop into my You can now hear that there is no pedal click noise from me clicking record and playback being picked up on the microphone and it sounds just as good as a condenser, but it has just less background noise that's being recorded. So finally, I just want to demonstrate the sound rejection on the dynamic microphone so you have a reference point compared to that condenser earlier. So if I talk directly into the front of the microphone, what you are hearing right now is this Sennheiser dynamic microphone. However, if I talk into the side of it, you can hear the sound rejection has started to kick in. Now, I'm really close to this microphone, so it might pick me up still a little bit more, but if I was back here and I was a crowd member screaming, it's hardly going to get picked up on this mic. Then again, if we talk into the back of this microphone, you can hardly hear what I'm saying into the mic because it's, it's hardly picking anything up because of its sound rejection of the actual microphone. So if you want to learn more about using microphones with your loop pedal, be sure to check out these videos down below where I show you various setup solutions, single microphone, double microphone, whatever you require for your live looping setup. But as always, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. I upload three videos just like this every single week. And let me know in the comment section down below, what style of microphone do you run with your loop pedal? Are you running a dynamic microphone or are you running a condenser microphone? But thank you so much for watching. I've been Ben Rollins and I will see you in the next one.